Have you ever wanted to 3D print metal parts, but you don't have the millions of dollars to buy a metal 3D printer? Well, that's where companies like today's sponsor, In3D Tech, come into play. They have on-demand manufacturing services that we're going to learn a little bit more about today. Hi guys, I'm Jack from In3D Tech. Welcome to this video. All right, so Jack, how many machines do you have at your factory? We have 300 equipment in-house. We can deliver the parts very fast in one day. Let's just go over everything you have at the booth because I feel yeah. like every part here kind of tells a story about your manufacturing processes. Yes. Another thing that you offer that I don't see on a lot of other service providers is actual carbon fiber parts. So this is a real carbon fiber part. Yes. It's not just 3D printed. Firstly, we will make a steel mold. So the surface finish is very smooth. You can see from the back side. This is carbon fiber fabric. Mm -hmm. And this part is very light and very strong. I mean, everybody wants to use carbon fiber in advanced applications because of yes. the strength to weight ratio. Yeah. And it weighs like nothing. There's one more over here. This is a motorcycle fender. How much would a part like this cost? The mode is around three or 5,000 US dollar. Mm -hmm. And the parts is very cheap, just 20 or $30 per wow. part. If you wanted to make one of these, it would cost like $5,000. Yeah. But if you wanted to make like 500 of them, it would only be roughly double the price. Yes. And then uh, this one right here, whoa, I, th I thought that was gonna be heavier. <laughs> Why is it so light? The material is nylon 12. After printing, we polish the surface to make it smoother. Then we do the coating on the surface. This is the final product. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like 100 pounds, so I was really <laughs> ready to pick it up and yes. I almost hopped Ma out of my hands. Many customers, they come here and yeah. they say, oh, this is a very big metal. Yeah. <laughs> but in fact, it's just a plastic. And then how did you get the metal surface finish? Or is this uh, some kind of paint? It's coating. It's a chroming process. Is this a rocket? Uh, yeah. It's got like that... Uh, converging, diverging nozzle, yes. and then there's a bunch of in, internal cooling features here. So it's a really uh, hard geometry to be able to produce. Yes. What material is this made out of? It's TPU by SLS printing. This is like a double-walled lattice structure, so it's, yeah. it seems really sturdy and it, it's nice and bouncy. Not quite as bouncy as like a, an air-filled basketball, but it's, yeah. it's pretty close. It's just to show the customer that the SLS can print very complex parts without support. What's the plastic that you're using here? It's autumn. Do you know the melting temperature of that plastic or how hot it needs to be? Yes, to it's almost 410. And then the, you need like a heated chamber too. Yeah, heated chamber is almost uh, 200. Yeah, you could boil water in there. Yes. So. Printing this material needs a very industrial machines. Also this material, PKK. The pack. What's the difference between PKK and PEEK? Pack is higher temperature resistance. Also, it's much easier for printing. Since you have all the machines in house, you have the expertise. Yes. So if you have questions about these technical materials, you can just send them an email. Yes, correct. We got a couple more interesting ones here. This is a full car headlight assembly or a yeah. tail light. I don't think this was 3D printed. For this part, it's by injection molding. And then you've got some sheet metal in here too. So the injection molding, the mold is very expensive. It's for large volume production. For prototyping customers, they can do it by 3D printing. We have the CNC machining. This one is aluminum. So this was done with five axis machining. Yes. In 3D printing, there are multiple surface finishes like sandblasting, glass beading, polishing, and also powder coating. This one is glass beading. This one is by polishing, the mirror polishing. Oh yeah. It can make the surface very smooth. And these are typically uh, polished by hand or do you have special machinery for it? Polished by hand firstly, then we polish by machine. It not only make the surface shiny, but also it can make the strength better. I used to work in a fatigue testing lab and one thing that is really important is the surface finish. If you have a really rough surface, those are potential uh, sources for the crack to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. it propagates and the whole yeah. thing fails. Looks like you've got a bicycle seat, you've got a TPU top piece, and that's bonded to a carbon fiber piece on the bottom. Did you manufacture both of the parts? We only manufacture the top. The top side is by 3D printing. You mentioned that you do instant quoting, and yes. something like this would be a little more complicated to describe. Once you get beyond like the basic, like this is the part I want to have 3D printed. How do you communicate with the customer the type of bonding that you need and uh, other assembly methods? If they only need the top part, they can get it by the online code very quickly. If the customer need them to bond together, they will need manual code. How long do you think it takes to produce a quote manually? In general, by manual, it's within six hours. 
Oh, six uh, hours? Six hours. We can wow. go to the apartment. Okay, that's, yeah. that's not bad. <laughs> and then uh, we've got another TPU piece here. Was this made by the same SLS process? Uh, this one is by MGF. Okay, multi-jet fusion, that's like the HP machine? Uh, yes, HP machine. Those are fun because they're not using lasers, they're using just like a really high intensity light to heat up the, the filament or the powder. The traditional way to make this part is by metal casting. Mm -hmm. Metal casting, it needs a mold first. That's why 3D printing for making this part is very cost effective. This is a very large part. What type of material are you using on this one? This one is common fiber with the nylon. There's a lot of material in this part. It takes almost uh, five days for printing this part. Wow. It still has the support material on here. We just want to show the customer how the parts come out. Usually you'll remove the support material before shipping it. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Before shipping to customers, quality must be very good. And then you've got some really kind of more decorative parts here. For this one, we print the same first. And then we do the metal casting. After this part finished, we polish the surface, then do the chroming on the surface, and we have many colors. There's and some glass. Is that glass? It's not glass. Oh, it's, okay. a, it's a resin by SLA printing. It's very clear resin, though. Yeah. We polish the surface. Oh, interesting. And then we do the color dyeing to make it colorful, like this. Do you have any customers that are using your services to produce optical elements? Most of the customers using this kind of material are the consumer customers, like bottles. We also have some film customers. They are shooting the film and the very strange clothes okay. they're using this kind of material. So like if you had a movie set in the future and you need some costume elements, yeah, yeah. you can print those out. You were showing me this helmet earlier. It's kind of interesting. It's got this spring pattern built into it. So it's making a flexible element out of a hard material. It looks like it fits like this. On it. Yeah, I figured out this. <laughs> this one, MGF nylon 12 with the surface finishes, the vapor feels. Okay, vapor smoothing. Uh, I've seen those machines before. They have like a bunch of solvent inside of them and they yes. dissolve the surface of the material. So that just kind of hides the layer lines and yeah. gives things a more professional look. Also waterproof. Oh, okay. It can make the part waterproof. This one is aluminum with the anodizing surface. And this was CNC machined? Yeah, CNC machine. 3D printing also can do this kind of part. But the surface, I mean, CNC machining is better than 3D printing. The surface finish on machined parts, and I think the tolerances tend to be a little bit better. In the tolerance, metal printing is around 0.2 millimeter. It's not bad, but after printing, we can do the CNC machining to get a very high tolerance like the CNC. Yeah, it's really common to like clean up flange faces and bore diameters when you're dealing with uh, yes. 3D printed parts. Yes. They get the net shape pretty good, but just like the really the last decimal points of precision. It's the same with casting really. This part is showing the capability of matte printing. I review 3D printers on my channel uh -huh. and I'll get them in and, and print stuff like this just to see how good the printers are. This is as good or better than like your Ender 3 or like Bamboo Lab machine. It's made out of a stronger material than a consumer printer. You can do finer details and you have really good ability to print overhangs. Yeah. So, I mean, there's really no reason not to use this process. <laughs> other than that, it's expensive. How much would a part like this cost, if you had uh, to guess? This part is like 80 US dollars. Okay, that's 80. really not that yeah. bad. So the customer, they can get the coat with one second. It's very fast. This material is a titanium, so it's a very high performance material with lightweight and also with high strength. Many industrial customers using this material for the automotive and also medicals for implants. Titanium is very non-bioreactive. Yeah. Certain other metals like nickel can cause a rash or some yes. kind of reaction. This one is a, a foot. It looks like it's got uh, some progressive spring elements built into there. So it's kind of like a interesting little prosthetic. 3D printing is really good for this kind of stuff. <laughs> yes. So like it'll have a bouncy heel and the, the toe will spring off. So, I mean, stuff like this is kind of pushing the development of uh, more advanced prosthetics forward. Yeah. And uh, you can take the scan data from a patient's individual anatomy, so it's just for them. Yes, yes. There's one last process that we didn't talk about, and that's vacuum casting. Probably I didn't bring it up because I've never heard of it before I came here. <laughs> so what's okay. special about vacuum casting? Vacuum casting can make the parts very close to the injection molding with low cost. Injection molding, it needs a steel mode. Vacuum casting only needs a silicon mode. For, for example, if we want to make this, we will print a sample first to okay. get the prototype, polish the surface, 
and we will put it inside the box ah. and then we put the silicone inside the box to get a chamber with this part. Is this using like a liquid polyurethane? Yes. I've actually done that process before, I just wasn't aware of it being called vacuum casting. It's like the silicone molding, you know, okay. the same process but with different name. But because they use a vacuum in the process, uh, yes, it, the vacuum. it improves the quality and probably gets rid of any bubbles that might show yes. up. And the thing about polyurethane is you can get it in a variety of hardnesses, so you can get really flexible, soft, stretchy stuff as yeah. well as stuff that's relatively hard. Yes. Like yeah. hard hats are made out of uh, polyurethane as well as like shoe soles and all sorts of different things. From show hardiness 30A to 95A. Okay. Also the hard plastic including ABS, PC, nylon, PP. Also the heat resistance materials. Well, you certainly have a good knowledge of all the different processes that you have. Okay, Jack, well, thanks for showing me around the booth. Just the variety of different processes that you have in your factory is very impressive. I've got a lot of designs that I'm working on, so can I count on you to produce them for me? Yeah, of course. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you.